Now in this video, I'm going to explain hypermonic test, which is also known as P3 test. <coughs> so the statement of the test is the infinite series sigma 1 upon n raised to the power p that is 1 upon 1 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 2 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 3 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 4 raised to the power p plus so on to infinity is convergent if p is greater than 1 and divergent if p is less than or equal to 1. So now let us prove case 1 when p is greater than 1. So as sigma 1 upon 1 upon raised to the power p can be written as keeping first term aside and taking the two first, second and third term together in a bracket 1 upon 2 raised to power p plus 1 upon 3 raised to power p plus and taking or we may say grouping the next four terms in a bracket that is 1 upon 4 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 5 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 6 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 7 raised to the power p bracket closed plus so on to infinity let it be equation number 1. So now if p is greater than 1 then p 3 raised to the power p must be greater than 2 raised to the power p. It implies that the reciprocal of 3 raised to the power p must be less than the reciprocal of 2 raised to the power p. As per rule, if we take reciprocal of two positive sides of an equation, of an inequation, uh, the sign of inequation is changed. So we get 1 upon 3 raised to the power p is less than 1 upon 2 raised to the power p. And now adding 1 upon 2 raised to the power p on both sides of this inequation, as we know that this is permissible to add the same term on both the sides of an inequation. So we are adding 1 upon 2 raised to the power p on both sides of this inequation we get 1 upon 2 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 3 raised to the power p is less than 1 upon 2 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 2 raised to the power p. So simplifying <clears throat> 1 upon 2 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 3 raised to the power p as it is is less than and if we add them up we have 2 upon 2 raised to the power p. Let it be equation number 2. Now again if p is greater than 1 then 5 raised to the power p is greater than 4 raised to the power p. 6 raised to the power p is also greater than 4 raised to the power p. 7 raised to the power p is also greater than 4 raised to the power p. So taking the reciprocals of both the sides of these inequations as we have done in the previous case 1 upon 5 raised to the power p is less than 1 upon 4 raised to the power p and 1 upon 6 raised to the power p is less than 1 upon 4 raised to the power p and 1 upon 7 raised to the power p is less than 1 upon 4 raised to the power p. So now next see proceeding from this adding all these three inequations together we have on the left hand side 1 upon 5 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 6 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 7 raised to the power p is less than 1 upon 4 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 4 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 4 raised to the power p or we may write it as 1 upon 5 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 6 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 7 raised to the power p is less than adding these three terms together we have 3 upon 4 raised to the power p. Now adding 1 upon 4 raised to the power p on both the sides of this inequation because it is permissible to add up a specific term on both the sides of an inequation. So we are going to add 1 upon 4 raised to the power p on both sides of this inequation we get 1 upon 4 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 5 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 4 raised, 6 raised to the power p 
plus 1 upon 7 raised to the power p is less than 1 upon 4 raised to the power p we are added as we have added on the left and 3 raised upon 4 raised to the power p was already there on the right hand side. So, simplifying we have 1 upon 4 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 5 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 6 raised to the power p plus 1 upon 7 raised to the power p is less than add them up we have 4 upon 4 raised to the power p. Let it be the equation number 3 and we proceed this process up to infinite number of times and adding the equations 2, 3 and so on we get so say this equation number 2 equation number 2 is this equation number 2 is this the left hand side of equation number 1 is 1 upon 2 raised to power p plus 1 upon 3 raised to power p and equation number 3 has the left hand side 1 upon 4 raised to power p plus 1 upon 5 raised to power p blah blah blah. So, we add them up all these kinds of equations in equations we get 1 upon 2 raised to power p plus 1 upon 3 raised to power p the left hand side of this plus the left hand, left hand side of this 1 upon 4 raised to power p plus 1 upon 5 raised to power p plus 1 upon 6 raised to power p plus 1 upon 7 raised to power p plus so on to infinity and it is less than because all these inequations have the sign of inequation uh, less than so now add them up adding up all these right hand side of these inequations we have first 2 raised to the 2 upon 2 raised to power p and on the right hand side of this 4 upon 4 raised to power p and so on to infinity. Now adding 1 upon 1 raised to power p on both sides of this inequation we get 1 upon 1 raised to power p plus 1 upon 2 raised to power p plus 1 upon 3 raised to power p plus 1 upon 4 raised to power p blah 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 so on to infinity and 1 upon 1 raised to the power p plus 1 up 2 upon 2 raised to the power p plus 4 upon 4 raised to the power p plus so on to infinity. As we have told that we have added 1 upon 1 raised to the power p on both the sides of this inequation. So, it is clear that this series becomes sigma 1 upon n raised to the power p which is less than this series which is quite clear is a GP with a common ratio 2 upon 2 raised to the power p and since a GP is always a convergent series so since sigma 1 upon n is to the power p is less than a GP hence it is convergent. Now let us consider the case number 2 when p is equal to 1 then clearly sigma 1 upon n raised to the power p becomes sigma 1 upon n because replacing p raised to the power uh, p by 1 we have sigma 1 upon n and sigma 1 upon n means 1 plus 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 5 plus 1 to infinity. Since 3 is less than 4 so it implies that the reciprocal of 3 must be greater than 4 so 1 upon 3 is greater than 4. Adding up 1 upon 4 on both sides of this inequations we have 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 4 is greater than 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4. On the left hand side 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 4 as it is and on the right hand side 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 becomes 1 upon 2. So we have 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 4 is greater than 1 upon 2. Let it be the equation number 1. Remember this is the equation number 1 of case second. There shouldn't be any confusion with the case number 1 because we have made 3 equations, 3 inequations in case number 1. So, that's why I have written these inequations by Roman numbers and I have indicated uh, the previous first and second and third inequations in the case second by numeric 
1, 2, 3. So, next, it's clear that 5 is less than 8, 6 is less than 8, 7 is less than 8. So, it implies that the reciprocal of 5 must be greater than 8, reciprocal of 6 is must be greater than 8 and reciprocal of 7 must be greater than reciprocal of 8. So, we have 1 upon 5 is greater than 1 upon 8, 1 upon 6 must be greater than 1 upon 8 and 1 upon 7 is greater than 1 upon 8. So, adding up these three in equations we have 1 upon 3, 1 upon 5 plus 1 upon 6 plus 1 upon 7 is greater than 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 8. It implies that. Now we are going to add 1 upon 8 on both sides of this inequation. So we have 1 upon 5 plus 1 upon 6 plus 1 upon 7 plus 1 upon 8 is greater than 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon 8. That is 1 upon 8 is added 4 times because there were 3 1 upon 8 already in the previous term, uh, previous inequation. And here we have added an extra 1 upon 8 on both sides. So it implies that 1 upon 5 plus 1 upon 6 plus 1 upon 7 plus 1 upon 8 is greater than add them up all 4. We have 4 upon 8 or 1 upon 2. So let it be second and so on. We go on doing uh, taking these terms and in the similar way we can find uh, infinite number of inequations. So, now adding first, second and all these kind of inequations, we have 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 4 from the first one, 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 4, left hand side of first is added to the left hand side of the second. So, we have 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 5 plus 1 upon 6 blah 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 and so on to infinity greater than the right hand side of the inequation first is 1 upon 2 and that of the inequation second is also 1 upon 2. So, 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2 and so on to infinity. So, on the left hand side we have 1. Now, we are going to add 1 and 1 upon 2. Be careful. In this inequation we are going to add 1 plus 1 upon 2. We are going to add 1 and 1 upon 2 on both sides of this inequation. So, we have 1 plus 1 upon 2 and these terms we are adding 1 plus 1 upon 2 in this. So, 1 plus 1 upon 2 and after that 1 upon 3, 1 upon 4, 1 upon 5 and so on to infinity is greater than on the right hand side. 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2 plus so on to infinity was the series in the previous step. So, in this step we are adding 1 and half on both sides of this inequation. So, on the right hand side we have 1 plus 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2 and so on to infinity. So, it is quite clear that on the left hand side it is sigma 1 upon n 1 upon n or we may say that sigma 1 upon n is to the power p when p is equal to 1 because in initially we have written clearly that this is the case of p is equal to 1. So, when p is equal to 1 sigma 1 upon n is to the power p is equal to is greater than not equal to by mistake I have written equal to because there was greater than sign so this should be greater than greater than 1 plus limit n tends to infinity n upon 2 because I have written this one as it is and 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 2 so on to inf infinity may be written as these two if added up n times we may n upon 2 and because n and that is the number of terms uh, is infinite so we may write it as limit n tends to infinity n upon 2 and as you know well that the value of this limit must be infinity and if we add up anything to infinity 
becomes infinity so 1 plus infinity is equal to infinity we get ultimately that is equal to infinity so what we have we have sigma 1 upon n is to the power p is greater than infinity if p is equal to 1 ultimately we have proved it and since it is greater than infinity so sigma 1 upon n is to the power p is divergent if p is equal to 1 now let us proceed to case third so now we come to case third when p is less than 1 if p is less than 1 we know well n must be greater than n is to the power p it implies that the reciprocal of n must be less than the reciprocal of n is to the power p so 1 upon n is less than 1 upon n is to the power p it implies that 1 upon n is to the power p is greater greater than 1 upon n so it implies that sigma 1 upon n is to the power p is greater than sigma 1 upon n but we have proved in case second that series sigma 1 upon n is divergent thus a series greater than a divergent series is also divergent hence sigma 1 upon n is to the power p is divergent if p is less than 1 so from the above discussion we may conclude that the infinite series sigma 1 upon n is to the power p is divergent if p is greater than 1 sorry uh, from the above discussion we may conclude that the infinite series, series was sigma 1 upon n is to the power p is convergent if p is greater than 1 and divergent if p is less than or equal to 1 so we have proved hypermonic test or p series test